Novelist Declan Finn is the latest to weigh in on this idea of the death of superhero movies. He actually claims that they are indeed dying and they're mirroring the death of Westerns, but he says it has nothing to do with so-called fatigue. Uh, Finn appears to have come across an old headline that resurfaced where director Steven Spielberg predicted that the superhero film genre would die much like the Western one did. However, Spielberg doesn't really give an explanation as to why it uh, would die. He just says it, it will die uh, much like the Western did. And this is what he told uh, the Associated Press while he's promoting his film, Birds of Spies, back in 2015. He said, we were around when the Western died and there will be a time when the superhero movie goes the way of the Western. It doesn't mean there won't be another occasion where the Western comes back and the superhero movie someday returns. But it does indeed say it's going to go away. So Finn reacted to these comments saying, yeah, sadly, but not because it's going to be overdone or worn out. This isn't superhero fatigue. There was no cowboy fatigue. So he's saying that there actually was no cowboy or Western fatigue back in the 60s. And he explains what happened to the Westerns is that in the early 60s, watch old cowboy TV series. You can see it happen. Writers couldn't relate to the heroic manly man as anything other than a hollow, evil, conniving villain. They didn't want heroes. They wanted anti-heroes. They didn't want people to look up to and aspire to be like. They wanted people who were so full of fail that they could feel good about themselves in comparison. With these characters inserted into the Western genre, Finn posits that the viewing public rejected it and stopped watching the genre. He says, but the viewing public hated that and wanted their heroes back. So they quit watching Westerns and turned to doctor shows where the doctors were still allowed to be heroes. Uh, from Kildare to Quincy, as he's giving examples. He went on to posit this also occurred in science fiction publishing. It's exactly what happened later with science fiction publishing. No heroes, only social messaging. He doesn't really give uh, any kind of uh, examples of that, but is that really? that's just kind of an aside, I feel like, there. Uh, but he goes on and says, from there, he shared an analogy as to uh, what they did to Western science fiction publishing and are currently doing to superheroes, uh, which I actually think this is a fun analogy here. It's as though a small group of people take over something thriving and drive it directly into the ground to improve it, like a certain fictional character inventing broccoli-flavored bubblegum for kids who don't like candy, complete with trading cards of great moments in opera. Soon there are only a select few of, of matching tastes that are buying or trading, and they think they're the entire world. Uh, they vote best opera trading card of the year amongst their tiny number and are very thrilled with each other. He then declared, we're not seeing superhero fatigue. We're seeing Brie Larson and crap writing, but I repeat myself all year long. Uh, he does offer a solution. He says, uh, we need the equivalent of indie printing in movies and TV. Stargate SG-1 was super and had to be cable because broadcast wouldn't touch it. Uh, he then said, uh, let somebody come in and say, you know, I really like the old bubblegum flavors and the sports trading cards. Can we do that too? And the click goes into assassin mode. You have to be able to ward off those assassins. We've seen this time and time again, especially if you've been paying attention to anything like Comicscape, Sad Puppies, etc., like like that, which is, uh, I think, some of the things that he's referencing here. And then he said, India is the way to go because really, who wants an anti-hero chewing broccoli bubble gum? Indeed. Uh, he's putting his money where his mouth is as well. He's the author of the current ongoing series, White Ops. He also wrote Saint Tommy and the St. Tommy NYPD series, uh, Love at First Bite, and the Pious Trilogy, among many others. He actually has a whole list here of his books. And then he also shares a uh, Twitter account that he, um, I think he runs with another author, where they share their recommendations for novels. So that is what he says. I think he's probably accurate. I'd have to go back and kind of dig into the Western stuff. I haven't really done an examination of that. But as far as the superhero stuff, I definitely think he's kind of on point here. Uh, I have seen some people say that they're kind of tired of superhero fatigue. But again, I think that's because a lot of the movies are just absolutely terrible. Uh, we see that a lot of these characters that they are showing, they are either A, incompetent, they're B, actually doing kind of villainous actions, they're anti-heroes. I mean, the fact that we had a Black Adam movie and they were trying to make him into a hero just kind of shows where that mentality is rather than having him be the villain of the series, because um, indeed that is kind of Black Adam's character. Yeah, he did have those runs where he was part of the JSA, but I think by the end of that Jeff Johns run, he was still kind of playing the villain, whether or not uh, you thought his justification for playing that role um, what was was um, plausible, which I think it was, but uh, or you might have like f felt sympathetic towards it. He was, the actions that he took um, to justify that made him a villain, right? So uh, there is there is that, and, and I think you see that um, over and over again in a lot of these genres. And then, and then not only that, you're seeing um, these male heroes, which he doesn't really touch on here. He's kind of just touching on the fact that you don't really see uh, male heroes get to do that. But not only are we not getting to see the male heroes do that, but usually they're being supplanted by a female character, a female hero, 
or quote unquote hero is replacing what the male character usually done. Usually that female character is also putting down the male character. You see that uh, very um, clear in The Last Jedi where Rey actually just beats the crap out of Luke. Uh, very similar to how Luke beat down uh, Vader at the end of Return of the Jedi, but she doesn't realize what she's done is just abhorrent. Whereas Luke does, he gives up and resists that temptation. Uh, it's Luke who is actually in the wrong in The Last Jedi instead of Rey. And so you see a lot of that subversion happening throughout um, the media. I mean, obviously, The Mandalorian, you saw it take place where the, the, main, the main character was kind of subverted by... Uh, the new uh, the new female uh, Mandalorian character played by Katie Sackhoff in Bo-Katan Crease. So there's that. Uh, and, and Finnegan isn't the first person to kind of comment on this. We've seen DC Studio CEO James Gunn um, kind of talk about this with Michael Rosenbaum. He basically comes to this idea that a lot of the creators now are lazy. Uh, I, I think there's probably something to that. I think there's a lot of factors that go into this. I think Finn is right on hitting the fact that these people don't want people to be uh, heroes. I think this goes into this whole like demoralization agenda that we're seeing across the culture, not just in movies, televisions, and the entertainment video games that we uh, play, watch, and read. But uh, it, it, it's it's everything. It's in it's in everything that's happening in our society, and you're kind of seeing this demoralization agenda kind of take place. And um, I think he's right to point on that, where they don't want to have people see heroes. They don't want people to have good examples to be like, hey, we need people that are going to stand up and say no to this. We don't want people doing that. We want people uh, that are going to be uh, compliant and kind of go along, not try and rock the boat when they see something that's clearly wrong. Whereas James Gunn seems to put it up more to like people are getting lazy. They're not really trying. They are just kind of slapping characters together, putting them on screen and thinking people are going to go and uh, spend their hard earned money to watch those movies or sit down and watch those TV shows, pay for a subscription or whatever and watch that. Uh, that's kind of uh, what he says here. Like you even see it here. I think what's happened is people have gotten really lazy with their superhero stories and they've gotten to the place where, oh, it's a superhero. Let's make a movie about it. And they make, oh, let's make a sequel because the first one did pretty well. And they aren't thinking about why is the story special? What makes the story stand apart from the other stories? What is the story at the heart of it all? Why is this character important? What makes this story different that it fills a need for people in theaters to go see or on television? And I think that people have gotten a little lazy and there's a lot of Biff Pow, Bam stuff happening in movies. Like I'm watching third acts of superhero films where I really just don't feel like there's a rhyme or reason to what's happening. I don't care about the characters. So that's kind of the gist of his argument there. And I do think there's obviously some extent to that. Uh, we clearly see this in a lot of the, the news reports that we cover here at Bounty and Comics. You see that with The Mandalorian. They were, they're working on two different sets. They have no really clue what's going on between the sets. Um, working on two different episodes. You've got the Marvel Studios Secret Invasion director saying they're putting together the rest of the season after the first episode debuted on Disney Plus instead of having it all completed, done, and, and not, not <laughs> spick and span and ready to go. They're literally putting it to cobbling it together. You saw that with J.J. Uh, Abrams, The Rise of Skywalker. He was putting it together like up until like the last week before they released it into theaters. Absolute disaster. James Gunn talks about this all the time, too, that he sees this all the time. They go to production without even having like good scripts or completed scripts. And then when they're there, they're rewriting all the scripts and just kind of cobbling it together and together into an editing room and hoping that uh, people will find it somewhat entertaining. And so you see a lot of that happening as well. Uh, and then I do think that, um, uh, I do think there might be some point to maybe a little bit of that superhero stuff. I know I said, I don't really agree to that, but I think that it does kind of set in when you get so much of the, like the bad stuff and you're just like, okay, I'm really done with superheroes. It's not really doing it for me. Maybe you look for something else. Maybe you look at some kind of, you look, you look at fantasy, you're looking at sci-fi, you're looking at crime, crime dramas, you're looking at revenge thrillers, you're looking back maybe at some of the more action-packed movies in like the 80s and 90s, uh, stuff like that. So you're looking for something else where you actually get to see heroes do that. And when you start seeing things like John Wick, when, when they're doing that, that's kind of where you start gravitating your attention towards rather than uh, the superhero stuff. So I can see some of that as well. But again, I think that does kind of play off what Declan is saying when he's saying you're looking for the story that the storytelling where you're actually going to see heroes being heroes and that kind of drives you away from that genre of overall so i think there's maybe a little bit of overlap uh in, the, in that in that thinking but let me know what you think what do you make of uh declan's uh, discussion here about uh, comparing the fall of superhero movies to the fall of westerns do you think a fall is even happening i guess that should be a big question there too let me know in the comments let me know what you think about declan's uh thoughts here and and, and what i had to say as well 
Uh, and if you like this video, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. Subscribe for more.